our world is constantly changing, and a part of that is our fault, from the burning of fossil fuels, agriculture, deforestation, and even waste pollution, all of which contribute to global warming. Now, is climate change real? And if we won't respond and act on this now, then who will? As a matter of fact, climate change is already impacting every continent and ocean on the planet. Scientists and experts came to this conclusion in a new report for the United Nations, which took five years to make and is part of a definitive study on climate change. Here's some of the report's biggest findings, and as listed, Asian cities, including the Philippines, are already suffering from this phenomenon. Moreover, do you know that the Philippines ranks third as the most disaster vulnerable country worldwide, as listed on the World Risk Report for three consecutive years? And in response to such matters, national laws addressing to climate change were enacted, such as the Climate Change Act of 2009 and the Philippine Disaster Risk Reduction and Management Act of 2010, respectively, creating Climate Change Commission and the National Disaster Risk Reduction and Management Council, which is currently mandated by the Office of Civil Defense as its secretariat and coordinating arm, from the national to the regional and down to the local level. As the executing arm, the OCD is the lead agency in supervising implementing and coordinating disaster-related functions. Its mandate and primary mission is to implement and administer a comprehensive national civil defense and disaster management program. Despite that, these responsibilities are shared among several lead agencies, particularly dividing them into the four pillars of disaster management. Due to this framework, the government has put priority on disaster risk reduction and management efforts. However, in relation to the Disaster Assessment Report of the Commission on Audit, the problem with the current disaster management seems to be the lack of coordination and integration, which was evident during the savage of Super Typhoon Yolanda six years ago, which has its humanitarian consequences. Furthermore, in Region 7, the current regional office of the OCD is located in Cebu, and based on our research, they lack the space, venue, and manpower to fully implement their programs. Just for a quick overview, these programs are as follows, from which, in summary, comprising of the four disaster pillars mentioned earlier. In addition to this is the education and training program which the regional offices conduct. It comprises of basic, advanced, and executive courses and is shown on this table. Applying the disaster management theory, thus, the current structure such as that of the OCB will still be of use for our development. Integrating and filtering similar functions for its users using the Incident Command System or the ICS Framework for Disaster Management by FEMA, known as the Federal Emergency Management Agency in California. Scale it down to the regional level in Central Visayas from spaces to occupancy. For the architectural program, we were able to incorporate these disaster pillars into three major sectors. Later on, designating them into three buildings. First is the Relief Operations Warehouse and Storage, Disaster Preparedness Center, and lastly, the Emergency Operations Center is the command facility for the development. Moreover, the users of a development would be the government officials of the DDR, private companies, general public, and students or visitors, all of which would undergo these training programs and could volunteer for disaster relief operations. In an interview with Ms. Hernandez, the Regional Information Officer of the OCD Region 7, we were able to identify the spaces they currently have 
what they lack and what they need, distributing them to the three major sectors. She said that the current building here in Cebu is up for expansion and relocation and that Mactan Cebu is their target location, most probably near the airport and air force base to make use of their current facilities. It is adjacent to the Mactan Air Base which is a private access to Mactan Cebu International Airport as per the client's request. To start with, we determined the access points to the site from the main road to its strategical access point to the Mactan Air Base. The shaded area is intended for the training field which also serves as a retention pond since the site has a slight slope towards the area. From that, we were able to determine the initial road network from its basic static form, from which form follows function. Taking the monsoons into consideration, we subtracted its volume for wind to pass through the midspan section, connecting the road network. We then divided the zones into the major sectors with a final building height, connecting them as one single building with a command center on top for emphasis and overall vision all throughout the development. The buildings are also strategically angled to avoid direct sunlight and achieve certain lighting and shades on certain times of the day. Furthermore, the final road network circumnavigates the site with a 10 meter span. As for the site development plan of the proposed complex, these are the major buildings, a disaster preparedness center, emergency operations center and a relief operations, warehouse and storage. The minor buildings are the gymnasium and a material recovery facility, which are also strategically positioned at the rear and front portion of the site. Shown are the pedestrian access including the site's road network. For the flow, First, we have the main access road shaded in green towards the major buildings with a drop of notes as follows. Second, shaded in orange is a flow towards the loading bay of the warehouse and the access road towards the Mactan Air Base compound. And lastly, we have the alternative drop off area for buses. The Disaster Preparedness Center acts as a school for training and educating its users of disaster management. Its plan comprises of office spaces and classrooms. The third floor is a linear promenade comprising of residence halls that could handle 90 occupants. The relief operations, warehouse and storage holds the goods ranging from clothes, cans, rice, and medicines. It will then be delivered on an elevated platform for easy delivery in and out for the trucks. The Emergency Operations Center is the third level from both buildings. It is also the command center for disaster response. For the minor buildings, the gymnasium can be converted into an evacuation center to maximize the space during evacuation phase. The material recovery facility recycles the plastics, cans, bottles, and papers. Here's the aerial perspective of our disaster resilience complex, entitled Aninag. Aninag in our Cebuano language means to foresee or envision, a place for preparation for the worst.